speech after leaving the White House, former President George W. Bush said he would not criticize President Obama. He noted the new commander-in-chief, quote, deserves my silence. Bush's inner, inner circle didn't get that memo. In our third story, Karl Rove is calling Vice President Biden a liar. That's right, Karl Rove, the man who lied to Bush spokesman Scott McClellan, knowing McClellan would repeat those lies and mislead the public. That man, Rove, a.k.a. Turd Blossom, is taking issue with the veracity of Joe Biden. It all began earlier this week when Vice President Biden sat down with CNN and addressed comments made by his predecessor, Dick Cheney. Biden called Cheney's assertion that the Obama administration's foreign policies have made us less safe dead wrong. In the middle of that interview, Biden also recounted a meeting with then President Bush. I remember President Bush saying to me one time in the Oval Office, and he was a great guy, I enjoyed being with him, he said to me, he said, well, Joe, he said, I'm a leader. And I said, Mr. President, turn around and look behind you. No one's following. No comment from the former president, but no need. Enter Karl Rove. The architect went into attack mode on Fox News. He denied that such a meeting ever occurred, and then Rove added this. I hate to say it, but he's a serial exaggerator. If I was being unkind, I'd say he's a liar, but it is a habit he ought to drop. You'll notice every one of these incidents has the same structure. Joe Biden courageously raises the impudent question, the president befuddledly answers, and Joe Biden drives home the dramatic response. And I mean, it just, it's his imagination. It's a made up fictional world. He ought to get out of it and get back to reality. I think there are very few presidents who spend hours with somebody in the Oval Office, particularly a, with all due respect, a blowhard like Joe Biden was. Joining us now, Huffington Post contributor and co-author of Bush's Brain, James Moore. And Jim, good to see you. Hi, David. Good to see you. Um, in the CIA leak case, Karl Rove lied to White House spokesman Scott McClellan, knowing that McClellan would go out and repeat those lies. Later, Rove nearly got indicted for lying to federal investigators. Rove must know that he's damaged goods when it comes to issues of veracity. So what's he trying to do here? I'm not sure, but how do you say, with all due respect, he's a blowhard on the other hand? <laughs> but, but, I but I have to suggest that, that there's something about Carl that is very, we ought to, in many ways, feel sad about. There's something pathological about Carl's inability to integrate reality into what he views to be reality. This is a man who has made things up pathologically. There's a pathology to what Carl is doing and it goes on and on and on. And we're talking about a man who basically ran a lie factory in the White House under the White House Iraq group and has completely ignored everything that contradicts what Carl wants to be true. This is what's going on in his brain. He has this little world that he sees on a videotape in his head and he believes it to be true. I think there's a great sadness in there and I think that we might want to pity Carl because Carl is completely disconnected from what's going on in the real world. And by the Iraq study group, we should remind, remind our viewers that was the group that was put together to help sell the Iraq war. And their primary argument was that Saddam had or is about to have nuclear weapons, something of which there was no right. evidence indicating that. Um, President Bush, in the midst of all this, uh, is trying to stay above the fray while his inner circle is, is, is essentially dispatched to go after the Obama administration. Is this part of an attempt to rewrite the Bush legacy? I don't think there's any question that every single thing that they do right now is connected to changing the way the public views what happened in the past eight years, David. They are going to consistently, and Carl included, they're going to try to rewrite history to make us think that X did not mean Y, that the fact that there were no WMDs was not the reason we invaded. We invaded because of more important or pertinent reasons. Carl and everybody else involved in this is going to continue to take this kind of approach. But to assume that Carl is lying for effect is, is kind of wrong because I think, frankly, that we're talking about somebody who doesn't really know what he's doing anymore. And again, I would like to stress that I think that there's a, a, a kind of reason for us to all dismiss anything and everything that Carl says as a consequence. We should note that uh, Joe Biden spokesman Jay Carney told Fox News the vice president stands by his remarks. Uh, Ari Fleischer on MSNBC earlier today demanded that Joe Biden supply a date for this alleged meeting with President Bush. Is this simply a coordinated, coordinated effort to try and distract the Obama administration? 
I'm not even sure they're paying attention to the Obama administration. I think that they do, from time to time, want to fire the bow shots at the Obama administration and see if they can throw them off of their game or whatever. But I think, frankly, their major concern is they realize, all of these people realize, that they have been connected to what is probably the worst administration in the history of our country. And they're trying to fix that. Karl Rove doesn't want people to think of him anymore is a George Bush guy. Karl Rove is trying to convince people that there's more to him than that. And everybody associated with that administration is now either distancing themselves or they're trying to fix essentially what is the public's general view of what happened in the past eight years. They've got a big, big mountain to climb. I don't think they can do it. And Politico is reporting on another bizarre altercation involving Karl Rove. Rove was eating a meal at the Charlie Palmer Steakhouse when he was aggressively approached by an ex-chief of staff to former Republican Congressman Tom Feeney. The staffer apparently told Rove he was offended by comments that Rove made about Feeney on Fox News following last year's election. So now Rove is essentially getting criticized from both sides of the aisle. I think this is funny, actually, because I, when I read this, David, I first thought, well, uh, you know, this is typical Carl. Carl is the kind of guy who is going to condescend to people who are right. And condescension, of course, is the refuge of the intellectually insecure. And Carl is going to take that kind of approach because when the facts are against him, he's going to try to make you think that you're just not very smart. It's kind of sad, actually.